Hello and welcome back to The History Freak and thank you so much for joining me on today's video when we're going to be talking about another of Charles II's mistresses, that's the lovable minx Nell Gwynne. Her story is really amazing. A poor girl born in London who went on to become a rich famous woman in a time dominated by men. If you haven't done so already, then now would be a perfect time to subscribe to this channel. And press that notification button and YouTube will let you know every time we drop a new video. And of course you can go and check our back catalogue of fabulous videos all about wonderful people from the Tudors and the Stuarts. Okay, let's crack on and learn about the wonderful Nell. So not a huge amount is known for sure about Nell's early life. There's certainly a lot of speculation and romantic ideas, but even the year of her birth is something people seem to disagree on. It seems it's most commonly thought that she was born in 1650. Just to give a time context on that, that's about a year after the death of Charles I, and about 10 years before Charles II, her eventual lover, takes the throne. Nell was not high born, so it's not unreasonable that not much is known about her early life, as who on earth would have thought that there would be a need to write down what she got up to. No one knew she would rise so high, so it's a little bit tricky to tell the story of her early life. As for Nell's family life, it seems her father wasn't really involved, and he possibly died in prison. Her mother is thought to have been an alcoholic who ran a brothel. Nell had a sister called Rose, and the family were poor. In 1660, after just over 10 years without a king in England, the Commonwealth ended and Charles II came back from exile as king. Most people seemed quite happy about this, as the strict rules of the Commonwealth had made England a far less fun place. One of the many fun-sucking rules during the Commonwealth had been that theatres should be shut, Charles quickly changed this and, fun fact, he also made it that women could act in the theatres as well as men. This was great timing for the young Nell, who would go on to find fame as an actress. But before that, the young girl was finding her way to survive in London. One of the ways she did this, despite her young age, was to have relationships with men. It's thought that one of these men gave Nell a place to stay, helped her out financially, and helped her get a job in the theatre. So Nell, along with her sister, found work selling fruit to people attending the theatre. She must have made some sort of impression while selling her fruit, as not too long after starting that job, she herself started acting. It's thought that Nell was illiterate, so learning lines must have been a challenge. It really shows how hard-working Nell, who was only around her mid-teens, was. This chance to act was a golden opportunity to improve her life, and she was not going to waste it. Nell showed a real talent as a performer, and started to become famous by the standard of the time. She was well known for playing comedy roles. She was also well known for being quick-witted, so I wonder if she ad-libbed on stage to get some extra laughs. The theatre was a more chaotic place back then, and certainly less polished than modern theatres and I feel she would have brought that quick wit to the stage and really give the people a great performance. Also, after years of men playing women on stage, a new fun thing for the audience to see was women playing men, which Nell did in several roles. At this time, it seems she had relationship with actors who presumably helped her in her career, but maybe she didn't need their help, as huge audiences were coming to watch her Despite the fact that she had respect and success as an actress, it didn't necessarily mean she was rich, although she was certainly better off than she had been before. As a king, Charles was well known for his relationships with women. Having spent so much time at the courts of Europe, he was used to seeing men of power with mistresses. Barbara Palmer was a particularly powerful mistress in Charles's early reign. 
If you'd like to know more about the fabulous Barbara, then why not check out our video about her life? I'll pop the link in the comments. Now the role of mistress was a really tricky one, as her position relied upon the king's good feelings remaining. To make things even harder, there were no end of beautiful women all trying to catch the king's eye, with the hope of gaining a special position in his palaces. To say Charles was spoilt for choice is a huge understatement. Despite the many options he had, when Charles did meet Nell, he was immediately drawn to her. Supposedly, they actually met at the theatre where they were both watching a play. The king, though, was far more interested in Nell than the play, and with her charisma, looks and wit, the two were soon out on the town building bonds. If we take 1650 as the year of her birth, she would by then have been in her late teens, while Charles was in his late thirties. The relationship between the two quickly got stronger, and over time she was acting less. Timing once again worked wonderfully for Nell, as previous top mistress Barbara Palmer had lost favour with the king, meaning Nell was in a really strong position. Part of the reason why Nell is so memorable is, unlike some of Charles's other mistresses, she was actually liked by the public. She was already known to them as an actress, of course, and they liked her for her humour and that she was relatable and never forgot where she came from. She used her power to help the homeless and her family. She also stood out from the crowd because rather than being a prim and proper woman around the court, it said she loved to use foul language. Nell was living her best life as one of Charles's mistresses, but one thing that caused her constant annoyance was her rival, French mistress Louise de Caruel. I have mixed feelings about the relationship between these women. In some ways, it's fun to think of them constantly trying to one-up each other. But on the other hand, things they said to each other were really quite cruel. It must have been annoying for Charles in the middle of these catfighting women, both of which were determined to come out on top. Some at court, like highborn Louise, may have wanted to hurt Nell by talking about the fact that she came from a humble start in life but robust Nell would use humour to get through it. Even if it had bothered her, she would never want to show a weakness to a rival. Something very important to Nell was she did not want any mistress to have something more than she had. This applied to money, Nell was now rich like the other mistresses. Also household items, she spent a fortune decking out her home Charles gave her with the most fabulous and expensive furniture. But most importantly, when it came to her children from Charles, they must have impressive titles. Nell pressured Charles to make her son an earl, and as his other non-legitimate children had received titles, so too must hers. Things might seem perfect for Nell, but life was not always happy. She faced some tough situations. Her second son by Charles, called James, died while still young. Apparently, Nell was paranoid there may have been foul play, thinking he may have been poisoned. Regardless of the circumstances, Nell was of course devastated, and it made her very depressed. Although she'd been able to help her mother and her sister and bring them out of their poor position, getting them homes and money, both women continued to have problems. Sister Rose is thought to have spent some time in prison, and Nell's mother continued to struggle with alcohol addiction. It's said she died after falling into water. Although Nell organised an impressive funeral for her, it must have been a very sad time. Nell was still quite a young woman when Charles died in 1685. I must think that there could be no more stressful and sad time for a king's mistress than this. Suddenly going from an amazing position to one of uncertainty. Before Charles died, he urged his brother and successor James to look after Nell. The new king was Catholic while Nell was Protestant. On top of this, it seems she had favoured one of Charles's illegitimate sons as a possible king after his death. Certainly a risky strategy to annoy the heir to the throne. Despite this, the new king James respected his brother's feelings for Nell and helped her out with a pension. Nell herself would only live about two and a half years after Charles. 
It's possible she had some sort of sexual infection that Frisky Charles may have passed to her. This is really unfortunate as it's thought Nell was faithful to Charles, but she was not immune to whatever he had picked up elsewhere. She actually had two strokes and was left unable to leave the home. She left her surviving son her money, but also gave gifts to her servants and left money to be given to the poor. She was buried in London. I think Nell is such a fun personality from the Stuart era and someone who doesn't get as much attention as she should in my view. She went from rags to riches and did it with the love of the people. She was one of the first professional female actors in London and I think she was a remarkable woman and someone who would have been very fun to be around. Alrighty then, that's it for this video about Nell Gwynn. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any thoughts about Nell, then feel free to pop them in the comments. And join us for our upcoming video when we're going to be talking about the wife of King James II, Mary of Modena, and the scandal of the warming pan baby.